all writers need notebooks. Even if you do the majority of your writing on the computer, it's good to have a notebook, something physical to jot down all your ideas. If you talk to 10 different writers, they'll give you 10 different ways on how to use a notebook. So I'm not even gonna get into that today. Today, we are gonna talk about the best notebooks. And when we think of the best notebooks, two often comes to mind. Moleskin and Lectrum 1917. I think that's how you say it. Lectrum? Lectrum? I always wanted a really nice notebook, but it's hard to splurge on one. And I know that a lot of you feel the same way. Then I thought, hey, I'm a writer. My expenses are pretty low. I got a pen, I got a paper, I could be a writer. It's like, why, why shouldn't I have a nice notebook? So now you've decided that, hey, yes, I am gonna get a really nice notebook that I'm gonna write in every day, but which one should I get? Should I get the Moleskine or should I get the Electrum? 1917. Well, I went ahead and I splurged and I got both of them. Uh, but I want to share my experience with you today so I can help you decide which one is the right one for you. So let's do it. Let's get right to it. So this is the Moleskine Classic Collection Plain Notebook. It has 240 plain pages at 13 by 21 centimeters, 5 by 8 and a quarter inches. Behind the label, there's this area for you to write down your travel experience or where you've been. So this book is clearly made for someone who is traveling, although it's not clearly marketed as such. This notebook has a one string bookmark and also a foldable pocket in the back that contained a pamphlet with the history of Moleskin, if you're interested. In that. It feels very nice in my hand. It's very sturdy. I think it could take a beating in my backpack, uh, no problem. The cover is a little hard. It's not particularly that nice to hold. I expected something a little softer that feels a little nicer when I grip it. It has this elastic band strap to keep your book closed. And like I mentioned before, all the pages are blank. I don't know how I grabbed this one. It's not completely ideal because my writing is a little messy. When I open it, I do find that the binding is a little bit tight on certain pages. It's just something I have to break in. And the pages, I find that it's, it feels kind of glossy and it's a bit thin. Overall, I think this is a fine notebook. Um, for $24, I'm, I'm not convinced. But let's go and check Lectrum 1917. This is the Lectrum 1917 notebook. It has 251 dotted pages. Uh, and this is a bonus, the pages are numbered. That's nice to know. It actually comes with a lot of features. It comes with a table of contents, which I don't know if I'll ever use because I never use a notebook in any logical way. Um, 12 perforated sheets, expandable pockets, much like the Moleskine has in the back here. It also comes with, hey, look, two separate string bookmarks. Are you kidding me? Look at this, two. Oh, it's slightly bigger than the Moleskine one, which I don't know if I actually need it to be a bit bigger, but it is. Uh, at 14.5 by 21 centimeters. It costs $24 Canadian retail price, which is exactly the same as the Moleskine one. Honestly, off the bat, I like the feel of this one a lot more. The cover is a little bit softer and the pages, I feel like they're not as smooth and glossy as the Moleskine one. Maybe just by a little bit. It's a little easier to turn, to grip it and flip the pages. I'm actually really impressed by the Lectrum 1917. I've heard a lot of good things about Moleskine, but I feel like for writers, this, this feels, this feels good. I feel like I would go with this. But I'm getting ahead of myself with these two notebooks. Let's put them through the ultimate notebook test and that's the pen test. Let's try it with different pens and see how it performs with each one. All right, I use five different pens on these notebooks to see 
which one performed the best, which one surprised me, which one was a little bit disappointing, and I also wanted to see how these two notebooks took the ink. Did it bleed through to the other side and leave a lot of ghosting? Uh, that's something I wanted to know so I know which pen I should actually use on these notebooks. So I, I chose five different types of pen. I chose the classic blue Bic ballpoint pen. I chose the Papermate ultra fine felt pen. Then I used the Papermate erasable gel pen. And then the Energel metal point rollerball gel pen. And finally the Pilot Kakuno fountain pen. Perhaps the most surprising one is the classic Bic ballpoint pen. That one actually performed really well. It wasn't super fun to write with just because it is made out of very cheap material, but the paper took the ink really well and the pen just wrote pretty smoothly. It performed great for both of them and so it goes to show that if you have a nice notebook, you don't really need a really good pen any pen would do. The Bic, just get yourself like a pack of 20 Bic ballpoint pens for like $5 and that will be fine. The disappointment to me was the erasable gel pen. It was unpleasant to use. The ink didn't really uh, come out that clearly on the paper. Unless you're really into keeping your notebook like clean and organized instead of scratching out a mistake like a chaotic good person like me would do i wouldn't use an erasable gel pen on it it's just not worth it it's just not pleasant reading something that's sort of if it looks kind of faded but the one that came out the best for both these notebooks was the energel metal point rollerball gel pen it was just a really smooth writing experience it felt as clean and smooth as if i was writing with the fountain pen but the fountain pen it it tends to get a little messy with the ink getting everywhere so that is actually to me a a good choice if what you're looking for is a nice smooth writing experience with these notebooks. However, here's the ultimate test with these notebooks. How does the ink hold on the page? And if you plan on writing on both sides of the page with these notebooks, this is an important thing to consider. It's like which pen do you use and how well does the page itself contain the ink? You don't want the ink bleeding over to the other side it renders it completely useless and therefore you can only use one page if you choose to use that pen so here let's take a look at the moleskin one as you can see all the pens are visible but the one that got through the most is the damn it is the energel metal point rollerball gel pen let's take a look at the electrum 1917 one now it performed a little bit better I would say than the moleskin however it was the energel metal point roller ball gel pen that seemed to leak through the most even more than the fountain pen in my opinion that is something to consider if you were to choose that pen uh, you can't have everything however in terms of ghosting pages overall I do feel like the Electrum 1917 performed a little bit better than the moleskin one. Maybe it's because of the dots. I don't know. Maybe because of the pages. It's hard to say, but that's just my experience. So what's the verdict? It's clear to me that Lectrum 1917 is a better value for writers if they're looking for a nice notebook. At $24 each, these are two pricey notebooks, but this one just to me has more value. I feel like Moleskin has a lot of clout these days, um, maybe because their brand name is a little easier to say than this but one. But just off of my initial experience, as soon as I'm done writing in these, filling these books with my uh, brilliant ideas, I do think I'm gonna go with another Electrum 1917. This is a really nice notebook. I really like it a lot. So I think what I need to do next is compare one of these really nice notebooks with like a cheap dollar store one to see where the quality actually suffers if I was to buy like a cheap one. I think that would be an interesting review. Uh, let me know if you're interested in seeing that. If you are, subscribe. 
I'm gonna start working on that right away. Until then, let me know what notebooks you are currently using. I would love some recommendations, your own personal opinion. Please share it in the comments below. And before you go, check out this playlist for some writing tips and tricks. All right, I'll see you guys there.